I bring you greetings of peace from the clergy and faithful of the Diocese of Cagayan de Oro, of the Iglesia Filipina Independiente in the Philippines. Good morning to you all. I thank Father Salvador for inviting me to commune with you today through this virtual celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Today marks one of the greatest days in our Christian calendar, the Pentecost Sunday. It falls on the 50th day after Easter. Pentecost started as a Jewish feast of weeks, a celebration inspired by the giving of the law of Moses in Mount Sinai, commemorating their freedom from bondage in Egypt. This feast became a thanksgiving of bounty, as the Hebrews settled in the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. The Christian celebration of the Pentecost is rooted in the story found in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles who were gathered in the room in Jerusalem. Before Pentecost, the apostles hid themselves from the public for fear that they might suffer the same fate as the Lord's. But at Pentecost, the apostles were suddenly equipped and empowered to carry on the ministry Jesus had begun from Jerusalem to the rest of the world. Pentecost therefore marks in the birth of the Christian church where empowered Christians participate in the ministry of Christ through a common discipleship. From Christmas to Easter, we find the Gospels appreciating us with stories about Jesus. He is presented as a child threatened with death by those in power. He fled with his family to Egypt to escape death but returned to Israel when time was ripe to continue his redemptive plan for humankind. More stories are found in the Gospels about Jesus equipping his disciples to take courage in boldly proclaiming the Gospel, performing miracles, healing every disease and sickness, giving sight to the blind, setting people free from unclean spirits, and teaching them about the coming of the kingdom of God. In these stories, Jesus was the central figure, offering us his work of redemption and salvation. The people were mere spectators. But in Pentecost, the story changed. It shifted from Jesus being the central character to the disciples who received a brand new role, and even later, to the whole inaugurated church. As a result of Pentecost, the church being equipped by the power of the Holy Spirit become actively involved in the work of the Lord in transforming the world rather than being spectators of what others are doing. That is what Pentecost is all about. It is the day that the Lord officially transfers to His disciples, now His church, the responsibility of spreading the message of salvation. And even our three readings concord in bringing up this new narrative. First, John chapter 20, verses 19 to 23, which is our gospel reading for the day, appropriated the account that the Lord appeared to His disciples who were cramped in the room for fear and told them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. John chapter 20, verse 21. The Lord sent His disciples to impact the pressing issues of the day and to make a difference in the world in which they live. They receive guidance from the Holy Spirit. Second, we learn from our first reading in the book of Numbers, how Moses prodded that all of the Lord's people shall be called to be prophets. He exhorted the people, saying, O oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put His Spirit, His Spirit on them? On Numbers chapter 11, verse 29. This account shows that the Lord anointed courageous leaders of Israel to share in the great responsibility of Moses over the people. It is incumbent to source out for more workers 
in order to make the redemptive task practically feasible. Third, our second reading informs us that those whom we called and sent were clothed with the Spirit of the Lord and received various gifts of the Spirit. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Some receive the spirit of knowledge and wisdom, others the gift of healing and working of miracles, and still others the gift of prophesying. In Pentecost, the Lord seeks and empowers His church to take action as the world suffered social injustice and human degradation. The Philippines, for instance, a country fraught with five decades of civil strife due to social inequity, even during this pandemic, human dignity continues to be trampled with violations, threats, and killings. Even churches and their leaders, the IFI included, who believe that social justice is attainable when the roots of the armed conflicts are addressed through peace negotiations, are not spared from attacks. Those who stand in solidarity with people in the margins, especially the church people, together with peace and human rights advocates, experience red tagging. Others are even arrested or assassinated. But the Philippines is not alone in this dire situation. Poverty, social inequity, and deprivation abound in a world full of greed. And because of this, the call for human solidarity is not only imminent, but imperative. In this trying time, the Lord calls us, His Church, to carry out our prophetic vocation and join Him in working towards the common good. We can participate in this mission wherever we are and in various forms and languages. Commissioned as new disciples, we must translate the responsibility of spreading the good news of Pentecost and together stand with the Lord as He exhorts us through His prophet Micah, saying, What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Let Pentecost therefore empower the church to action. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.